Hey, what's up guys? This is Brad with Boy Fitness, and <clears throat> I got a video that I've been sitting on for a little while that I, I'm actually pretty excited to, to bring to the table. It's one that I, I filmed back a couple of months ago, uh, but finally worked up and, and caught up to where, you know, where, where I was. Um, and so it's a conversation sitting down with a, you know, a well-accomplished uh, female lifter and bodybuilder and powerlifter. Um, and it's just a great conversation, something I really, really enjoyed. Bit of a different uh, kind of tone and vibe uh, from what you know you know, normally have on the channel, and uh, I think that this is really a, a great video for anyone that has uh, you know daughters, uh, anyone that has a girlfriend or a wife or just anyone that, that knows a female that's you know interested in strength or is involved in strength already. I think this is like a really just really cool video. Um, it's something that I, I can't wait to show my own daughter someday too. So. I'm pretty excited about it. I do have to apologize. There was a lot of copyright protected um, music in the background, so I'm going to have to overlay music kind of through the whole thing. I'm going to have it quiet enough, or I'm going to try to have it quiet enough where it's not super intrusive. Um, but I got to try to, you know, get away from the uh, the copyright claims. So uh, that's what we're working on here. So anyway, check out the video, and uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. That is what editing is asking. Oh, <laughs> All right, guys, what's up? This is Brad with Spike Fitness, and I'm doing another kind of conversation here. We got Matt, and we got Brianna. Brianna, okay. So, um, one thing that my channel is woefully lacking on is females. So, I thought it might be beneficial for any females that might come across the channel to have a female on, and you, yeah. you power lift. I do. And Pretty body. successfully, right? Yep, powerlifting and bodybuilding. For how long now? Uh, powerlifting, I've been training in that specifically for like a year and a half or so. Um, and then bodybuilding, been training to compete for the last few years. Okay. So I've competed in both. Okay. So like, you know, I think it's probably a you know fair amount of experience in the gym and around the gym and around people who are in the gym and yeah. that kind of shenanigans. So I thought it might be kind of a good opportunity to sit down and just have some freeform discussion on you know, issues or, you know, just, just considerations of being a female in kind of the strength environment and like how that, how that's for you and like uh, perceptions and difficulties and we got coffee, Thank you. Um, you know, like just kind of just talk about stuff that affects you as a, as a female and, and especially too kind of in mind of anyone that, any females that might want to get into, it. Okay. you know, someone that's thinking out along the lines of like, I like the idea of lifting, but but this or but that, right? Yeah, but you'll be both. Right. So we'll kick it off. So, what do you think? What do you think so far in your kind of pursuit of strength has been your biggest challenge so far? My biggest challenge? Yeah. I think. Okay. So I think uh, when I first started. So I've been in and out of the gym, like around weights and stuff, since I was like 14 years old. So I've been an athlete my whole life, and I started picking up weight training in high school, um, on and off through college, and then I think the biggest challenge was through college I was always working out to lose weight. I was stuck in that like typical like female mentality. Cardio like, bunny? Yeah, yes. I went through my cardio <laughs> bunny phase in college. I had six months. I only, I ran, yes. I ate salad like every single meal and I ran for 30 minutes and I did abs every single like six days a week. Did that all work? I did. I lost weight. <laughs> did, you get, did you get fit? I hated the gym. I lost everything. So like I grew up as an athlete and I loved just being active and then through that process like I lost weight but I lost also like any enjoyment that I got from fitness or being active or anything like that. So then. Um, after that, I was like, you know what? I my goal is just to enjoy the gym again. I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I just want to do whatever I like. So I started lifting weights again, um, but I was still kind of in the mentality of like the trying to lose weight, trying to get smaller. Like I always wanted to be that little petite girl, mm -hmm. which <laughs> I, I I definitely yes, it has changed, and and that was the, that was the challenge that I had to overcome though is that. I always, I, I wanted to get stronger and I wanted to get more cut and I wanted to put like on like a little, a little bit of muscle, but I still always wanted to weigh less. And that mentality, like changing that mentality of just like focusing on the number. And I feel like you hear that all the time and it's like a cliche term, focusing like don't focus scale. on the scale. Mm -hmm. But 
like it's so true. It's it's the cheesiest thing, I think, but it but it's so true. And like once I overcame that and was like and understood that if these really were my goals in fitness and in strength, then I needed to let that go. Mm -hmm. Then like that was awesome. I think that's the way a lot of a lot of women are afraid to get into the gym for me because they they want that toned look. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize to attain that tone look, you have to build muscle mm -hmm. to have something to tone. Like, yeah. what, are you, yeah. what are you going to tone if you haven't built any muscle? You're going you to tone up your joints? I went up like, <laughs> yeah, really pretty elbows. I went up like Stephanie Sanzo, but I don't want to lift weights. You know what she does? She fucking squats. So, okay, first question that popped out of my head with all that is, mm -hmm. during your, you know, your cardio bunny and, uh, you know, vegan, <laughs> vegan, <laughs> vegan style, yep. what did you weigh at that point in your life, if you can remember? I was in mid to low points. And think. and approximately, mm -hmm. not like exactly if you don't want to talk about it, where are you at now? I'm about 150. And so 30 pounds heavier. Yes. How do you feel about yourself in comparison now to then? That's I, overall, you know, actually, mm -hmm. how you feel? I am light years more confident. Yeah. Um, I just like before I was trying to fit some kind of mold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of like what I thought was attractive to guys or what I thought like pretty girls looked like or, mm -hmm. or whatever, it whatever it was. Whatever it was is like what I was supposed to look like or like the perfect body, right? Fuck that. I make my own perfect body now. Right. Like I make the mold and I get to create it and that's something that's like the most beautiful thing I've found through strength and fitness is that you get to create your body. Yeah. And like you get to create exactly what you want it to look like and, and the strength you want to have and the things you want to do, like the adaptability of the human body is outstanding. It's so beautiful. And that like I found that. And that I think is where like my confidence has like is, is rooted in. So then when we, we kind of talked a little bit earlier in the gym and I, I was talking about how I think that a you know a woman who pursues strength to you know, better herself through you know through the pursuit of strength, I think that's a really beautiful thing because um, it builds so much more than just strength. Like physically, yeah. it builds that confidence. It builds that you know that that persona, right? I'm gonna say it's not just women. Like that's that's what made me who I am. Right. Like, getting into the gym when I was 15 completely changed who I was. I was depressed like very badly. Um, Suicide was a common thought when I was 15. And when I started lifting, actually putting on muscle, that completely changed the, the entire human being that I was. So building muscle completely transformed me into who I am. Right. It gave me confidence, it gave me self-worth. Like, what changed that kind of suicidal mentality was, um, now I've got this body that I put a lot of work into, and it'd be kind of shitty to fuck it up now. <laughs> <laughs> feed, the, feed, feed the worms. So one one point that I want to make off what you said is that you know instead of instead of trying to cram yourself into this mold, this idea that kind of society has built, especially American society, what it tells, I, I hate the the idea that it gives young young girls mm -hmm. what they have to be or what they should be, right? But yeah. when you have found something that you enjoy and you pursue it for you, yeah. you are a happier person, you are. and then you will attract people around you based on your creating your own happiness. Exactly. So instead of trying to fit yourself into a mold. You know, pursue your you pursue your goal, your endeavor, whether it's strength, and obviously, if you're watching this channel, it probably is. But you know, it, it, whatever your whatever your goal is, you pursue that, and you become a better person and through that pursuit. And then you're going to attract people to you based on uh, based on you being who you are. And you're gonna attract those people that you want to be around. Right. Because, like, like you said, like instead of trying to cram yourself into some mold or make yourself into what someone else is looking for. Um, like just like even in, in relationships like I was in that position where um, someone I was with like this was their ideal and I was trying to fit that but you know I was that obviously didn't work <laughs> so you fucked up bro <laughs> <laughs> so I mean now I like you said I do this for me like yeah. I do this because it makes me happy this is how I like to train and then you know powerlifting bodybuilding and you know those things give me the outlets uh, to compete with like how I like to train. So, uh, 
one of the frustrating things like I see online a lot in like in the female population in social media is always saying that the bodies in a lot of these magazines are unattainable. But you've reached it through strength training. Like it's not an unattainable thing. You can't you just have to not be lazy, disciplined, like eat correctly, train a little bit. Like so many women transform their physiques just by changing what they eat. Mm. Just by stop just by stopping, you know, the the fast foods or any you know, that kind of thing, just cooking more at home and eating. Yeah, I mean if you if you feel yourself overwhelmed by the you know the idea of what changed, you know, of what you know changing things might represent, you're overwhelmed by like, oh I can't I can't make all of these changes at once. You don't have to. You don't have to. Brick make, by brick. Brand make also one change. He's talking about that on his channel. It's taking that one step at a time. Like yeah. A new brick in the wall. Like, yeah. So make one change. Yeah. Start with your diet. So we talk a little bit about perceptions, we talk about um, you know other issues. You know, and especially that I have an opportunity to sit with a female that lifts and it actually does very well. Um, you know, I, I want to talk about some other type, types of issues that you found female in and specific. around, you know, as female specific, strength, you know, with being kind of involved in the strength, you know, arena. I mean, what about what about male perceptions? Do you find that you have issues with males and or females that maybe that don't know you? Do you feel like is there judging? Is there like social media like hazing or like? Oh, you look, you look like a dude, or you know, any, any of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I've gotten like, some of that, like, on, like that I look like manly or something. I'm not really over social media. Honestly, I don't think I'm too big on social media yet to like yes. have those kind of haters. But um, I mean, I've heard that from uh, just like people. Your friend of a friend said something. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like. Again, I do this for me. So if you like that and you want to be a part of it, that's cool. But if you don't like it, I don't care. Jealousy is a stinky thing. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't gotten a lot of, like, a ton of negativity. Um, I've been fortunate enough that most people who do love and talk to me, uh, it's more of a positive thing. Like, they're asking my advice or they're, they're just saying, like, oh, it's good lift. They're like, that was I did see a saying online that men who fear strong women, or men who don't who talk shit about women who lift are fear strong women, and women who talk shit about women who lift fear effort. So, I mean, that's not the exact saying, but it was something to that effect. We're paraphrasing. Yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. I mean, for really, when you look around and a guy's like, oh, that girl's too big, like, it's just because he's a pussy. You know, the one thing I do get, like, the most negative, it's like almost every post I make about Benji now. Yeah. You want to guess? Oh, yours. <laughs> yeah. You're going to blow out your back. Like, do you want me to explain this every single time? That's crazy. I think. But yeah, that that is that is one thing that I get. And sometimes it's it's more inquisitive. Like, yeah. why do you do that? Um, Mechanical advantage. Yeah. Next question. I'm like, look, yeah. it shortens the distance of ours to travel and it creates tension from the floor to the shoulders. That's, that is the simplest way I can put that. Yeah. Um, but now I'm finding it more and more, like every single time I post a bench video, someone's either like, Yo, you're going to break your back, and like, you need to educate yourself yeah. before you make a comment online. Yeah. But when you say that, <laughs> when you make a comment like that, you're letting me know how dumb you are. Yeah, it takes away all your credibility, man. Like, don't make yourself look like a fool. It's crazy. So, okay, so that, that might be a kind of a valuable point for, you know, any any young women that are out there kind of looking to maybe get into the sport or into, you know, uh, either bodybuilding or powerlifting. You know, here is a young woman, how old are you? I'm 25. 25, right? So, uh, been doing it now for how many years, you said? I've been competing in powerlifting for a year and a half and bodybuilding for two years. Okay, so, you know, kind of getting into it. So here's a, here's a, a woman that's not experiencing too much negativity and you know, so if you are out there kind of sitting on the periphery thinking about getting involved in it, hey man, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good time to jump into it. I think the, you know, environment, society, it's much more popular than it ever was. Yeah, Way more accepting than it might have been, I don't know, back in the 70s. Not even that long ago. Right? Say even well, 10 I know. years. I know, even like back early 2000s, it would have been yeah. far, far different environment yeah, than it is no, now. I completely agree. That's awesome. I completely agree. All right, so what else? Well, what? She's made a lot of progress really fast, too. Let me point that out. She's been powerlifting for a year and a half. She already has a 365 pound deadlift after just a year and a half of, you know, have you, deadlifting. In the have you looked into like USPA and you competed at, in, in that federation at all? So I competed in the BDFPA, okay. British Drug Free Powerlifting Association, and 
and I ranked nationally there. Oh, yeah. um, so that was, that was a really cool experience. Uh, I started competing in powerlifting while I was stationed in England. Nice. So I haven't gotten to do any like American leagues or, or bigger like federations, um, but I absolutely plan to. Uh, kind of same thing with uh, with bodybuilding. I've done. Um, a couple PCA shows, which is a, a British league, and I've done one MPC show. I was able to go back to the States on leave. Um, just not a lot of opportunities here. Yeah, Korea. right. So when I Korean get Korea. out of Korea, <laughs> right. um, more opportunity. Yeah, definitely. I want to say a big cheers to all my uh, my friends out in Great Britain. I know that there's a number of guys and, and gals out out in uh, Great Britain that watch the channel. So, you know, oh, yeah. she's, I was there for three years. She, she was back in your in your country, stomping around, raising hell. So the reason why I mentioned the USPA piece is that at least within them, I haven't looked at the other federations, but they have kind of categories for like class one, class two, master, you know, elite, international elite. So they're okay. like you can kind of look at yourself in terms of total and figure out kind of where you rank. Um, you know, so that's one thing that I like about USPA is they have that. You know, so you can say, yeah, hey, I hit it. I hit an elite total for my, you know, my my weight class, or I've, okay. you know, so that's kind of where I was going with that line of question. Yeah. Um, right on. So I don't know what else. What, I want to like get into some more like just different topics. What do you think? What would be? What's interesting for you about? Um, I don't know. What's interesting for you about powers? What got you into it? Um, one of my real good friends at the gym. Uh, got me. He he started training me for powerlifting. Yeah. I just I was decently strong already. I mean, like like I said, I grew up being an athlete. I've been in bodybuilding. Like I've been lifting weights for several years, and I just happened to be like strong-ish. And so then he kind of like took me under his wing because uh, he had competed in powerlifting and a um, little bit of strongman too. But he had several years of like powerlifting training behind him, so uh, he, I'd never trained specifically to get stronger. But once I started doing that, my, so since then, and so that was probably a year and a half ago, give or take, my squat's gone from 290 to 365. My bench has gone from probably like one, 50-ish to 195, and then my deadlift has gone from, I don't know exactly what it was, under 300 to 365. Nice. So big, big So you were saying big improvements, right? Yeah, big improvements in, in just like about a year and a half, and, and you're gonna see that um, with, yeah, with uh, with anyone that uh, is like new, newer to lifting, but I think I wasn't new to, to lifting in general, right, just sure. newer to training specifically for strength. Right. And I remember, um, <laughs> it was the simplest answer, but so at the last gym I trained at in England, at Asgard in Newmarket, shout out to, to Paul, the owner and my coach there. But um, anyways, so I had a girl there ask me like, Squat so strong, like you're so good at squatting. How do you get so strong to squat? I was like, I trained to get strong at squat. <laughs> I was like, I literally, I lifted Screen, and trained with the purpose of getting stronger. Like, it is simple as that. So, uh, like, setting goals. Yeah. Pursuing them. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Having an actual, a, a tangible plan. Yeah. Like, tracking. Yeah. Tracking your progress. I write, I write down every single workout. It's crazy. I, Honestly, rarely look back at them um, further than like a week or two because I'll reference what I've like the weights I've done in the past week yeah. to like make sure I'm on the right track building wise. And then, but like, I don't go back and open like my old training log and yeah. like yeah. reminisce or so anything. So, what are your but words it, to the females who are like, who go into the gym and they just throw a 25 on either side of the bar and then they squat that and they do that every single week? For months and years, and they never put, and they don't. You mean no progression? Yeah. What do you say to them? Because that's like the the majority of females I see will just go in, throw something on they're comfortable with, whether it's squat, bench, deadlift, whatever it is. They'll throw on a weight that they're comfortable with. They know they can lift it, and then they just do that forever. You don't grow in your comfort zone. That's true in the gym. That's true in life. That's true in work. In in anything, you don't grow where you're comfortable. You have to push yourself. You have to. Again, you have to have the discipline to push yourself outside of that comfort zone and know that you want it bad enough and do it for yourself, not for someone else or not for society or whatever. Like you have to do it because you want it. And where, then where did diamonds form? Get get out of under pressure. Under pressure, right? That's true. 
That's very, very true. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, I've been, I've been so fortunate to kind of be in the environment that I'm in and have the opportunities that I've had and like be able to just, I mean, even through the army, right? Just travel around and be able to link up with different people yeah. and, and capture different experiences and talk about different things. And that's like, that's kind of what I want to bring to the channel too, is just like different perspectives. And, uh, you know, I think it's kind of cool to have like a female perspective on stuff and, you know, be able to kind of talk on it from that. In that perspective, because obviously yeah. it's, the lens is a little bit different than, than mine. Yeah. Um, so. I will put out there though, I'm very used to being around the majority of men. Dudes. Yeah. Um, I mean, since since college, I I have been like the females have been the minority. Yeah. And Here's a so question. So I'm, I'm just I'm just used to it, I guess. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that the pursuit of strength ranking is the the goal of increasing your total? Mm -hmm. Do you think training is any different for a female than it is for a man? And how so? I would say not just based on gender. Right. Um, I would say based on, I mean, there's gonna be differences in how like frequently you train based on size. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm gonna be able to recover faster than you can right. because you're a big dude. Do and more there's damage. a lot of muscle to recover. Um, but that's not because I'm a female. I'm the big dude. <laughs> that's not because I'm a female. Right. That's because I'm that smaller. Do show, right. So that females do naturally recover faster than men just because of certain stresses in your life you have to experience. Like that. So your body has to recover a little bit faster. And females do actually recover faster than men anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, especially with being a, a lighter lifter, you know, if you and I go into the session and, and do commiserate work, say like 80% you know, range, right. my 80%, I'm doing more damage than my 80% that you're doing yours. Yeah. And so, you know, that's one thing that I've found in kind of working with women is that generally women recover faster. Mm -hmm. So like one of the issues that I had in programming for females before is I wasn't throwing enough volume at them. No. You know, like I threw, I threw like my range of volume at them and they were underwhelmed. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I just feel like training wasn't that bad. So, so then, so then, what do you, what would you say to people who like any females that are out there that are kind of curious about getting stronger, but have that that thing of why well, don't want to like that hang up? I don't want to get bulky. Okay, I promise. Any females watching this, you will not. Both of you. <laughs> All two of you. Go ahead. So, okay. word of, words to women who are afraid of getting bulky. Who are hung up on that? Okay. Yeah. I promise, one hundred percent. It takes so many years and so much deliberate, purposeful, hard work to get what you think of as as bulky. So long and, and, and so much work to get there. You will not accidentally find yourself bulky. <laughs> Unless you wanted to get there really fast. Unless you get and fat. Jump. But that's not well, bulky. Well, that's that's about just injecting. Fat. Yeah, do, do oh. steroids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can't do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. But if you're doing that, then you're not concerned about... You're yeah, then, concerned then that, that concerns out the window. Yes. Yeah. If you're worried about that, it will not happen on accident. That's, I think that's probably probably the truest thing you could possibly say. Like, you're, you're not going to accidentally stumble into bulky. That, that, no. don't, that doesn't that's happen. Almost like, that's, that's like insulting that like, if, if you think you can just like do that, like I did not end up with this physique on accident. Like right. I worked my freaking ass off for years to to yeah. put on the amount of muscle that it I have. It takes now. a lot more time than people realize to get as big as And then conversely, we it also takes a lot of time and concerted effort to get yourself fat and out of shape too. Yeah. Like when you're like when you're morbidly obese, yeah. like that, that took time. That, that didn't took happen. A lot of that years didn't happen of bad overnight. diets and sitting around. Right, that took a long time to build. So all right, cool. So I, I think no truer words have been said than that. And that's probably a great point to take a pause and kind of close this one down. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank you guys for your time and you know the opportunity to sit here and chat with you. It's uh, it's been fun, um, and so hopefully for you viewers out there, you know, just have a little bit of a different perspective and some other some other voices, maybe a little bit more entertaining than just listening to me. I don't know, probably not because I'm wildly entertaining. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's it. I'm gonna close it down. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave in the chat box below. I will also link. Well, you don't have social media because you're an old man, but I'll I will link her social media so that you guys can you know. Check her out, follow along, you know, get to know her as a lifter and an athlete, see what she does in the future. And um, yeah, like I said, questions, comments, concerns, hit us up. Um, I appreciate you guys checking out the uh, the video. Likes, shares, and subscribes definitely help. So I appreciate that too. Remember, no matter what it is you think you can't do, get in, train to spite. You're either gonna find an excuse or you're gonna find a way. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others saying that I'm blessed. But I keep my head 